So I'm going to begin hand painting this kit. I've been test testing out to see how it works, but I'm going to pour a little paint here, at least a few drops, because I don't have smaller trays, unfortunately. I'm going to paint it without thinning it out with water. See how it looks. This is the uh, Vietnam dark green I'm going to spread it out a bit put a little water here Not very good at at hand brushing, but I'm I'm giving it the the old college try, as they would say. Let's see how it looks overall. The last time I hand painted a kit was the the infamous um, Delta Delta Gundam with the gold plated uh, parts and I painted the um, blue parts um, blue I forgot what the color was but it was like I said you know what many people don't has asked me have you ever painted hand painted before and I know it, um, hand painting is will work if you want to like detail certain parts, like very very small parts. That is to paint a Gundam. That's a different skill set that I don't think I can ever achieve. I tried, you know, but I don't think I'm gonna hand paint a Gundam anytime soon. Now that I got myself a better airbrush, we'll talk about that later. That was good go nice and smooth, that's for sure. Because you also remember that when you hand paint something, you want to give it that um, look where it doesn't show the streaks. Granted, certain paints will settle during the uh, course of the painting where <clears throat> you don't see the streak lines, it actually um, levels out, you know, where the paint levels out during the process. So I hope this does this. I didn't paint the bottom. I didn't paint the bottom part, but this would be a fine. I 
Okay. I'm going to let this dry here and then we'll come back to it and see what it would look what it would look like after it's dried if it if it if it doesn't show as glossy it is, you know, the, the paint levels out, it looks okay. But for now, we're going to leave that alone. Let's go to the spray booth and start airbrushing. Okay, so we're now going to begin airbrushing, and I'm going. To, I have another uh, first grade kit that I had for a long time. I've already primed it. This is the actual, I believe, the uh, Gino Ace Custom, which, quite frankly, I was uh, disappointed <laughs> when it first came out in the series. There was only like one scene in in the anime, and then it was replaced by the the other one that the um, pilot was using. Mm, hold on a second, I'm just trying to get this on. Some of the clips, and we're gonna we're gonna test out the painting, but airbrushing it, of course, and this time we're going to use um, give me a second here, I'm trying to figure this out, okay, I can do this we're going to we're gonna use thinner and using a better airbrush, unlike the previous airbrushes I was using before uh, sorry, Neo sorry so we got my... and by the way for those um, in my last video, which I did talk about this, I said it wrong. It's actually pronounced Galaxy. Uh, it is phonetically referred to as the Galaxy. So, okay, I'll call it Galaxy. But, we're going to be using two colors here. And uh, something to brighten it up. I could easily use white because it did come with the kit. Oh, I did get white, but I'm going to be using flanker, ice blue, and yellow. We're going to begin with the blue. I'll mix it up a bit. And this time we're going to put more than five drops here. I think that should be fine, right there. Uh, here's my siphon. I keep misplacing my siphon. But that's okay. I like to eyeball it. Oh, here it is. It's free all this time. So I'm going to be using leveling thinner. I'm not using the standard thinner, which is probably probably a good idea to try. But I'm going to try leveling thinner, like I did the last time. And. Let's see what kind of reaction we get with this. I'm going to put a little bit more. Right. I forgot to clean up one of my mixing tools. So let me just briefly take a moment of this. If you guys want to see a review of my um, gallery paint uh, airbrush, I posted it yes um, the day before. I'll put a link on my video so you guys can see it. All right. Now then.
Now I should test this with water, but I'll do that with the yellow in a moment. Right now we're doing this first because I, I don't, I'm, I'm afraid of spraying water through my airbrush, and it gives me a problem. But then again, I am using the 0.38, uh, 0.35 uh, needle. I'm not using the 0.5. I think, okay, maybe if I use the 0.5 needle, which gives me a much more larger um, flow, then that would probably work out with the um, with the uh, acrylic paint painted through um, using water as a, as a base thinner. You know what? I forgot to turn this on. Let me pump this up a bit. Let me just clean this up a bit. Sure, it flows out fine. I will pour the paint into the nozzle, into the um, cup. And let's pray. Let's see how it comes out on the paper. Comes out pretty nice. You know what? I think it's a little too wet. Mm -hmm. Actually, it comes out okay. The angle on this kit is a bit difficult, you know, obviously because it it was a first grade. Yeah, interesting. I'm starting to see some resistance here. 
Aha. So first of all, it's not flowing very well. And I think this is where I'm starting to see a problem. Not because it's a bad problem. See, there's enough pain in there. But nothing is coming out. Or it's coming out difficult. It's thin pretty well. Let me give it a mixture. But I think my theory that I need a, you know, a much more larger nozzle, you know, to actually for the paint to flow through the airbrush is required for this type of paint. Right now I just did a mixture and, it, you know, I mixed it up a bit so that it can come out. Now it's coming out fine. I'm going to finish up this part. Let me just finish it up a bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the needle and change the nozzle. I thought, well, first I got to remove it, then I got to clean it. Oh, now it's coming out pretty well, but we will definitely switch over to a uh, the 0.5 needle to get this type of paint flowing. But let me just finish up the body first and then we'll switch over to that in a minute. Yeah, because something like this, I know that acrylic paints are very, very thick and you definitely need to give it a much more better flow. That's why I was hearing about that, that you know you need a, bi a bigger not, um, a bigger um, uh, a needle and nozzle when painting acrylic. But all right, so that's fine. Plus, I want to test out the um, see how well if I use masking tape on on this type of paint. Alright, that's nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the paint out of this. I'm going to clean it. I'm going to replace it with the 0.5 millimeter needle and nozzle and see if I get a better result. It was, it was struggling. It does work. But let's see what I can do. So give me a moment while I take care of that. Okay, I have replaced the needle with 0.5 and the nozzle. I pour back the paint inside. I have now started to notice a few things. But first, let's spray this part and see how it looks. I'm going to zoom in here for a bit. I'm gonna go. So now it's starting to flow a lot better than it what used to be. Before, I had to like push it in and pull the pull it in a lot, and I think it's because of the thickness of the paint. And it also, I also discovered something else. This paint, I cannot use leveling thinner on it. Because, like I mentioned before, some of the part, see this, how there's little, those little lumps there? That's actually part of the pigments. It's starting to break up like that that you normally see when you have bad milk. You can do it. You just gotta be, you know, you obviously gotta be fast and things like that. Um, I was surprised that it did that. I haven't seen that in a long time. I'm gonna, let me get another part here to do. The head would be a lot easier because it's, it's all based on the, on the type. Here we go. No, oh, come on. Hold on a second. Can I do that? Can I do this? Yes, I can. It is flowing. And that's a good thing. I, I was struggling with my new airbrush. This uh, gallery uh, airbrush is amazing. It is my new workhorse um, uh, airbrush. If anybody is planning to get one, go ahead. It's a little too wet. I'm going to give it another pass later on. Yeah, 
it's a little too wet. Um, what can I do for the, I can do the backpack, yeah. And plus I'm doing it too close, I gotta like, go from a distance here. I guess I'm gonna have to test it out with water. I just I'm I'm more I'm hesitant with water. That's why. But I'm gonna test it out. Even if the possibility that I may ruin my airbrush. My new one. And there are there is acrylic thinners out there. Hopefully when it dries, it looks a lot better. I am going to recover this up because this one didn't have a good coverage. Yeah, and I think it's because of the... Hold on a second. Am I done? I think I'm done. Oh yeah, I'm done. Perfect. Perfect timing. Now I can pick the other color, but I'm going to prepare, I'm going to prepare this with water. So let me clean this up and we'll do that in a moment. Okay, now that the airbrush is cleaned, we're going to now test this using water. And hopefully I don't get a bad result. Obviously yellow is not the, the appropriate color to use, but we're going to try it anyway. Probably a good idea to do it on a cup like this and not on the airbrush. Because when I was doing it on the uh, cup with the other color, you started to see the separation beginning. And I was a bit worried because I don't remember seeing that in the previous testing. But let's see what happens. Pour a little bit of water. That's a little too much water, but we're going to I'm going to give it a little bit more of the paint because that way it doesn't come out too wet. And then I can probably put the remaining back inside the paint. Quite surprisingly, it is reacting well to water. It has the consistency of milk. I don't see it uh, separating it. I don't see it, you know, like the blue did, which I'm going to test out the blue one more time. I'm going to pour a little bit on this, not too much, just so I can give it a nice pass there. It is coming out wet, way too wet. But that's because I'm too close. Let me do a far, uh, far blast here. A 
Oh yeah, it's way too wet. Alright. Alright, we're gonna have to remix this again. But I have an idea. So it, there's always a way to do this. Um, can I pour it back into there, remix it, and bring it back up? That doesn't hurt. No, doesn't it? I mean, it's already, it's water-based, right? It should work. Will I be ruining this bottle of paint? Who knows? But if I do this, close it up fine. Give it another mixture. <laughs> here yellow is a difficult color to work with that's a certain the airbrush, the paint. It's now too thick. That's because I think when I when I poured the water, it may have kind of separated where it let me see. Let me try to mix it up. Right now it's 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 too way too thick. It's coming out, but it's coming out bad. I'm gonna try this a bit. I gotta pace it a bit. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. A little bit would be fine. <laughs> I'm not digging this. I'm not digging it at all. It's coming out way too... Like, it's a combination of wet and dry. It's flowing fine. Alright, I'm gonna change it a bit. Do it from a distance. The worst I can get is spider webs. But it's coming out. Alright, now it's coming out. Just needed a good flow. This is considered trial and error. More, sometimes more error than trial. But this is where you need to understand your paint, how it works. We're so used to, we're accustomed with one paint that sometimes when we switch to another, we don't know the actual 
you know, how it will react to our airbrush, how it will react to the environment. And right now, it's not reacting the way I'm liking it. Let me just clean up the knobs a little bit because there is a little bit of bit there. Maybe I should give it a little bit more pressure. digging how this is coming out. I may have prepared this wrong. Very wrong. It came out well on that part. Now it's coming out difficult on this one. Let me clean it up a bit. Stand by. Okay. Of my own human error, I didn't mix that yellow right with water. Because it, got, it, w it was way too much water. So what I did was I rebalanced up the water a bit. I made sure it was a good two and like one and one um, mixture, and now increasing the pressure on the air on the compressor, it's flowing much better now. Not too wet, but not too dry. And now it's coming out really nice. Now, obviously, this is already wet in its own way. And I was trying to recover this guy, but I have blotches there, so I'm going to have to repass it up again. Let me do the other one. So, so I can even it out a bit. See, now it's coming out nice and smooth. Nice and smooth. The paint works, especially with water. I am surprised. I thought it would be great with the thinner, but water does work. There is a caveat though. If you're dealing with water, I believe drying time is a little longer. Because unlike uh, regular um, lacquer based thinners that will work with water, um, sometime it will, sometimes it will, it will dry a lot faster um, if you're in a rush. But this one came out pretty good. Nice. That came out nice. Let me uh, get another color here. And the part that there is. As long as the paint flows fine, that's good. I have enough here for the for the entire part here, and now I'll put I'll put the rest back in the bottle. Plus, you got to be patient. Very very patient with this. You know, something you can do immediately. Just make sure it goes through. Um, and even though this is a water-based paint, I would still have good ventilation so that way it can dry up fine and even
That's good. Very good. Okay. Let me... I'm going to let this dry a bit. I'll revisit it again in a few minutes. So I can give it a second pass. Give it a second pass. And then, you know what? I will uh, pull out another kit that I have to paint it. See how it comes out a diff with a different color. Now that I realize that waterworks, we'll try a different kit. Give me a moment. I have something that you may like.